Hey, good morning, everybody. We're back with Adam Thayer on Warner Realty Group's uh, All About Real Estate channel. And today we're going to talk about something that I know nothing about, which is SBA financing, which is something Adam does in, I believe, in Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. Is that yeah, that's right. Mean? Yeah. Awesome. Yep. So come on and join me. Welcome, uh, Adam Thayer. Thanks for joining us yet again. And I uh, hope you're having an awesome day so far. Oh yeah, we're surviving. Real estate's crazy. That's all you can do is survive. Survive the day. We got to do better than survive. We got to thrive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thrive. We're thriving over here. It's yeah. at least it seems like it's interesting how um, late the spring market is starting this year, isn't it? I mean, from from my office's perspective, um, the numbers that we're seeing in the winter time um, are still much higher than average. So. Um, I'd say it's still higher than what we were seeing throughout from, let's say, 2010 through 2016, 15. But um, it's definitely down from 2020, 2021, especially with the, the explosion of refis that occurred back then. Yeah. But uh, that's large on a residential side. I, I'm seeing kind of pretty much the opposite on a commercial. Commercial is really uh, continues to just absolutely explode. So really, it's sometimes tough for me to tell. Is it is it that my office is just maybe getting a little bit more market share and we're we're just doing a good job, or maybe we're getting more referrals, or is it the market is just you know accelerating in that sector or a combination of both? But um, it's, at least what we're seeing is that a lot of the um, commercial is continuing to tick like this, the same way yeah. residential a year or two ago. Yeah. yeah, residential has been super slow. We usually see so much more inventory by January and February, and, and uh, boy, do we have some frustrated buyers. But that seems to be loosening up. Finally. And, and you know what? You know what's funny? Actually, um, another realtor that I'm friends with called me the other day. He goes, I don't want you to think I'm mad at you. Um, I haven't sent you any referrals because I go all I do is go to showings and go to open houses and then our my clients' offers are never accepted. Yeah, that's exactly what I, I don't know what to do. So he said, You're probably not hearing from a lot of realtors right now. No one's mad at you, just so you know. It's just that there's we're just not getting deals. Yeah. I'll tell you, if you're a realtor and you're not focused completely on sellers right now, it's gonna be a tough, tough market. Yep. Yep. But anyway, so always a pleasure to have you, Adam. And let's talk a little bit about uh, SBA financing, as I said at the top. I don't know what that means. So yep. I'm going to hand this right on over to you. When you say you do a lot of SBA financing, what does that mean? Um, so what we're really almost always talking about is SBA 504 financing. I mean, there's another subset of financing, 7A. Um, but the primary um, type of loan product that we're talking about is a 504 loan. Okay. And let me just, you know, a scenario that comes up quite frequently is, um, you know, on the residential side, there's tons of different loan products. You know, you can get a VA loan and put zero dollars down. I did a seven figure closing a couple of days ago where the, the buyer got back almost fifty thousand dollars at closing on a residential because they got a VA loan. There was a closing cost credit, all this other stuff. So, wow. you know, in, in residential, there's everything from you're putting down 20 plus percent and there's no private mortgage insurance or PMI to all the way up to your, you're getting maybe a two or three K rehab loan, or you're getting a VA loan where you're putting zero down and everything in between. Right. Um, with commercial, there's really, I mean, you can always get a hard money loan, but if you're talking about like institutional financing, like a bank loan, you're really going to get, you're going to get a loan from a bank. Um, almost always they're going to want 25% down. Right. Um, and you know, they're, they're going to do a, Right. They're going to do, you know, some sort of 70 to 80, 80 you know, would be extremely generous, but um, or less uh, loan to value. Mm -hmm. And so what can happen there is that can be cost prohibitive for many um, small business owners. And so enter in the SBA. And what the SBA essentially says is that we want to help create American jobs. So how do we do that? Well, we want to help people who are trying to buy real estate where they're going to operate their business. So this these products don't really apply to um, investment real estate, uh, uh, you know, commercial rental properties. But if you're buying uh, real estate for your business to operate, um, whether you're a realtor, restaurant, whatever it is, the SBA can step in and make it much more affordable. Now, very, very broad brush, this is how it works. The SBA partners with a local bank. Now, there's a, a two... Um, 504 lenders in the state that I primarily work with. And what usually happens is they're the ones that very frequently have the first touch with the client. They'll meet with them and they'll say, okay, what, what is it that you're trying to do? Where are you? Maybe you're buying the building that you're currently renting or so you're expanding or whatever. And they'll say, all right, you're in this particular sector. Well, I know that bank X 
is great for this because they love that sector. They're very uh, proficient on it. They're very knowledgeable on it. They'll, they would love to do that. They're probably the best, you know, bank, local bank or whatever, or maybe they'll shop you around. And then the bank and the SBA partner, and let's just use round numbers here. Let's say you're buying a million dollar building. The bank will give a 50% loan. So $500,000. The SBA will then basically give you 40%. You only have to bring 10% to the table. Wow. And that 10% can even be seller financed. So hypothetically on a commercial deal, you could bring $0 and be exclusive of closing costs. You could bring $0 to closing, wow. which is unheard of, obviously. Sure. So um, now that's the very broad brush of it. The way it actually works in, in, in the nitty gritty is that the SBA loans are technically a debenture. They're, they're basically like a bond. So the SBA doesn't have the money to lend at the closing table. All, the, right. all the debentures, all the loans basically get sold once a month. But because you need the money for the actual closing, what ends up happening is the bank that's giving you that primary 50% loan gives you a 40% um, interim financing loan. So at closing, you actually have three loan packages. You have bank loan one, bank loan two, SBA loan. And we close on all three. We record all three sets of mortgages or whatever, the security documents. And then after the closing, when the SBA loan funds, it automatically wires to the bank that pays off loan number two. That mortgage gets discharged and the bank, the SBA third mortgage slides into second position automatically. Okay. So from a borrower's perspective, you're only ever making two loan payments at once. You're either paying the first two bank loans or then bank loan one and SBA loan. And that, that interim loan from the bank is going to be an interest only because, again, the whole point of that is just to like, it's a bridge loan. They're just trying to bridge the gap from the closing to the SBA loan funding. Right. So the initial huge, huge advantage of this is the drastic decrease in the amount of money that you need to put down. Yeah. So, you know, we could be talking six figures of money that's that somebody now does not need to come up with that they can reinvest in their business. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that right there, the product kind of starts selling itself. And so when I really started getting into the commercial realm, my, my initial introduction to that was, was largely through the SBA lens because I had so many people from, I do a ton of local hospitality work, lots of those restaurants um, yeah. and hotels and everything else. Um, we're getting these 504 loan products because it, it, it made deals doable on their end. Yeah. Um, but the number two huge advantage is the way the interest rates work. When you get a normal bank commercial loan, it's almost guaranteed it's going to be some sort of a variable rate product um, with some sort of a benchmark, you know, um, Bank of Boston, Wall Street, Prime, something like that. And they're going to have a spread over it. And that's how they're going to calculate your interest rate. And there's going to be something like a five year. You know, yeah, I was going to say, rate. how often does it recalculate? Maybe five years, seven years, 10 years. I mean, and then you're going to have some sort of a balloon payment usually. Maybe you have a 25 year amortization with a 10 year balloon, something like that. Um, but the interest rates, obviously they're variable. So who knows what they'll be in the future? Right. Um, the thing with the SBA is the rates are fixed. Nice. And since we're in, since we're in historically lower rate environment, still somewhat, um, you can get basically residential interest rates wow. fixed on that 40% loan. So you're not getting the 50% loan from the bank is variable, but then the 40% loan with the SBA is fixed. And so you can Google it, the rates, they, they publish the rates, um, but you're, you're, you know, you're generally speaking, talking like something like a residential interest rate. Um, yeah. So you're drastically decreasing the cash to close. You're fixing your interest rate on 40% of the loan. Um, and so those are the two, and I can get into more of them, but, but those are the two huge advantages to these types of loan products. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, um, and who are the banks locally that do that? Um, so pretty much, I haven't been involved in any 504 lending with what we call like a very large bank, like a, a Bank of America or Wells Fargo, but um, Bank Newport pretty much almost every year wins the award. I don't know if it's an award, but like a recognition that they're the number one 504 partnering lender in the state of Rhode Island. They're just, they're very um, comfortable with that system. Uh, they, they, I do a ton of it with them. Okay. Um, Bay Coast, Centerville Bank, People's Credit Union. Those are the those are the ones that I personally deal with most frequently. Um, gotcha. I have been involved in cl closings where there have been other banks like like Navigant um, or Washington Trust or Bank RI. But the, in terms of the banks that I primarily work with, it would be Bank Newport, People's Credit Union, Centerville, and Bay Coast. Um, and another major advantage of this is that um, in terms of getting a loan approved by a bank, 
if you're going to go to bank Newport or people's credit union, whoever, and you're going to say, I want to do this, this, you know, project, whatever it's going to be. Normally they would be, you know, vetting that project based on a 70, 75, whatever loan to value. And, and that's how they're calculating their risk with the SBA products. They're at a 50% loan to value. So wow. okay. they're, they're much more likely to lend on a product that sure. might, you know, feel more risky because they're in first position at only a 50% loan to value. Yeah. So it's, it, uh, it, it can, can increase the, the likelihood of your, of your product being approved for, for lending. Um, if you're going to go with the 504 project process as well. That's fantastic. So if somebody was watching this and they're thinking, Oh, I'd really love to, you know, buy the building I'm in. Do you think that they start with the bank or would they go through, uh, you know, federal SBA or, how, how do, you, do you have any experience with how business owners are starting that process? Sure. Yeah. So the um, when I first went to my first class um, to learn about all this S SBA stuff, it was like that um, that scene in Good Morning Vietnam with the acronyms where <laughs> I'm in a room full of people who've been doing this for 30 years and I'm in this class and I've never done one. And they're just throwing out these acronyms like the EPCOC talk to the CDC. You're like, oh yeah, of course, that's exactly what you do. You know, because <laughs> you don't want to look, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, because the, the it gets there's it's it's just loaded with acronyms. And so the um the same way, like if you went to a total mortgage or an embrace home loans or something like that, like a mortgage broker, mm -hmm. the same way that they're going to give you a loan product, but it's really they're kind of the face of it, they're selling you the mortgage, but Got there's gonna be a bank behind them. That's kind of the way these these SBA loan products work. There's what's called the CDC, which is a certified development company. And they are a local nonprofit that sort of acts like a mortgage broker. They're kind of like your coach, your the person who's working with you throughout the whole process. And so, like locally, there's a company um, out of Warwick called Ocean State Business Development Authority. Okay. They're just do an unbelievable number of uh, 504 loans with them. They've lent to tons of people locally. Um, and so the folks there, what they'll normally do is they'll sit down and they'll they'll go through the whole process with with the, the borrower and vet the project, whether it's, I mean, I'm telling you everything from a tattoo parlor to a restaurant to um, yacht brokerage. I mean, pretty much a marina, um, uh, auto repair business. I mean, I'm just almost any sort business. of business that you can yeah, think any of. Yeah, business. Um, occasionally it comes the other way. Sometimes there'll be, um, let's say a, a borrower has an established relationship with Bay Coast and they're uh -huh. dealing with somebody there and they say, hey, we wanna do this next product. Their loan officer, um, probably has a relationship with either Ocean State or another uh, certified development company. Got and it. they'll say, hey, you know what? Um, although the bank would love to have a 75% loan to value here and get paid even more money getting a, a you know, higher loan value, higher interest, yeah. I, need to, I should do right by you as the client and let you know that really the best thing for you probably is to get an, a 504 uh, loan you know, package here because it's going to decrease <clears throat> uh, your, your cash to close and ultimately the interest you're going to pay over the life of the loan. Yeah. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah. So there are, there are a few caveats here. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Um, <laughs> one of them is that the closing costs are higher on 504 closings okay. because there's just number one, you've got a whole additional mortgage, a whole additional loan product that's getting sure. so, a, a so lot you have more two origination fees to yeah, everything. Yeah, pretty much. So if you, you can see these, like those binders back there, that's, that's like a 504 closing. Oh, um, okay. maybe let's see, maybe like, yeah, about two, about two of those three ring binders per closing. So one of them will have all the bank documents. One of them will have all the uh, SBA documents. Um, so it's, it's from a lawyer's perspective, it's considerably more work. Um, and so the upfront closing fees are going to be higher. Um, the counterbalance. So, you know, it, to, to counterbalance that, you don't want to be in and out of these loans real quick. You don't want to be flipping the property. I mean, that's not the intent of these loan products. The intent is to get you a place where you can have your, your business's home base and operate there. Um, but so if, if you're going to get into this loan and then maybe be out of that property real quick, that's not what you want to do. Because first of all, the um, there's going to be prepayment penalties, which is going to, that's the name of the game. I know we're not used to that in the residential world. Commercial world, prepayment penalties are the default. Um, so expect those. And then also you haven't given yourself enough time with the lower interest rates to recoup all of the benefit that you got by having the fixed low interest rate on the 40% of the SBA loan. So that's, that, that, that's the number one thing. The other major component of how these things are structured is if you've ever, you know, had a business or you've been had business clients, 
most of the time when they have, let's say you, let's say you have a restaurant and you yeah. own the real estate, you'll normally, you'll have a company that you form that owns the real estate. Then you'll have a separate company that you form that runs the restaurant. And so this can, is done for a number of reasons. One would be a uh, limitation of liability. You overserve somebody at the restaurant, they get in a car accident on the way home, you get sued. Your operating company is being sued, not your real estate holding company. Got it. And that's the idea. Um, but then beyond that, there can be tax advantages and stuff like that. When you do one of these SBA loans, what they they that's how they want to structure it anyway. So what they'll have you do is you'll set up what they call an eligible passive company. That's your real estate holding company. So Sandy, you set up a bit, uh, uh, buy a new location for your business and it's Warner Realty headquarters. We would probably set up something like Warner Realty Real Estate LLC or something like that. Mm -hmm. That would own the real estate. Then we'd have your Warner Realty brokerage rent that property from your real estate company. Makes sense. And the way we set this up is we have a special lease that we sign that basically says whatever the carrying costs are for your real estate company, that's the rent that your operating company pays. So let's just use an easy example. Let's say your uh, real estate holding company is paying between the taxes, the insurance, and your loan payments, whether it's bank loan one and bank loan two or bank loan one and SBA loan. Let's just say it's paying $5,000 a month yeah. carrying costs on a property. It pays that. Then it invoices your operating company, which then pays them $5,000 for that month's rent. So it's, it's, a, it's a cash neutral situation for your, your, your real estate company. This is why they call it an eligible passive company. It's completely passive. Your operating company then um, needs to occupy, um, it, it leases 100% of the property, but it has to occupy a minimum of 51%, which means you can sublease out 49% of your business. Wow, that's fantastic. So yeah, so I, I did one of these 504s for a lady who ran a, a healthcare business and she, she bought a property that was, she might eventually fully grow into, but she, it's too big for her right now. So obviously healthcare, there's tons of complimentary practices. Sure. She can buy the place, get the 504 loan, and then sublease out 49% of it to, let's say a dietitian or, or whatever, these complimentary uh, medical practices that then right. help subsidize her costs. So once you start these things, again, the three, ring, the three ring binders can scare people. When they see those, they freak out and they go, oh my God, this is just too complicated. Because <laughs> they feel like it's so much information, they can't absorb it all, right? Yeah, and it can be. I mean, imagine how it was for me. No one here in my office did these. And the first few of them, I can assure you, I did not <laughs> I did not look good on the first few of these that I did because it was such a steep learning curve. Sure. But um, we figured it out. You make a mistake. You just try not to make the same mistake twice. And next thing you know, you're being interviewed, being an expert on something <laughs> on, a, on a video, um, which is crazy. But um, but it's one of those things. That it can seem daunting. It's almost like if you have to clean up a super messy room, you, you don't even know where to begin. You just, yeah, just take start. one, you take one thing at a time, and before you know it, you're like, wow, that was actually wasn't that bad. At the end of the yeah. day, people just want to know what, who am I paying, how much am I paying, where do I need to send it. And, you know, it's like a prepaying penalty or something like this. Something. Yeah. That's, we can just, we can drastically distill it down. Um, but that's the general idea on these things. That's fantastic. I didn't know any of this. Yeah. I mean, that, and it's one of those things that nobody does. I mean, or not nobody, but like very few people do. And the people who do know, um, just, they're just doing 504s all day because they'll, they'll get, they've had property A and they've operated there and they're, then they're going to expand and they're going to get a new location. Um, because people in Portsmouth won't drive to Newport because it's too far. So you no. open up a satellite location in Newport for your Portsmouth, <laughs> you know, to expand your business. And so you get us now you, you've got another um, real estate holding company that will set up. That'll be like, uh, you know, let's do the reverse, like Sandy Warner Realty Bristol, you know, because yeah. you want to open a Bristol location. Same deal. You Now you get another 504 for that, for that property. Yeah. So the people who are in the know, this is just how they operate. They'll, That's they'll, fantastic. They'll, they'll, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what questions should I ask that I haven't? Um, I think when we're talking about from a realtor perspective, a broker perspective, yeah, is again being conversant on these topics. Yeah, because kind of the similar the way I look at myself is that people come to us for advice very frequently at at the start or before they're even getting into a transaction, and so. It's one of those things, if you don't know it, you're almost, you're doing a disservice to your clients. So one of the 
partners here um, back in the fall was basically told me, hey, I got this client. He wants to buy this building. It's a business location from, uh, from family members. The problem is he only has 10% down. So I told him he's out of luck. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, like, I just yeah, happened. You know, so it's, it's one of those things where all of a sudden I walk in there like I'm turning water into wine. I walk into a room like, like literally like a savior. And I'm just telling them something that not a lot of people know, but the people who do know go, yeah, duh. Yeah. Of course do that, that, that um, loan product. So it's one of those things that if you just having this little nugget of knowledge, you know, the, the realtors and the brokers are hopefully um, clicking that like button and subscribing. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I forgot to say that if you do enjoy these, don't forget to hit the like button, hit that subscribe and then hit the bell. So you get notified because Adam and I do these every week. And exactly. these are, these are really deep dives on basic real estate craft and knowledge and and yep. learning this kind of stuff just makes you so much better at your job oh i can't tell you the number of times i've gone on the phone with clients in a commercial um situation where even if the 504 doesn't work out having that knowledge and showing showing that value add to them that hey i i you know i know what i'm talking about or at least i can yeah. you know fake it till you make it you know type stuff but um i know what i'm talking about i can guide you in the right direction and this might not be the right loan product for you but at least the same way if you were buying your house and you went to movement mortgage or total mortgage or bank newport or wherever and they sat down with you and went through these are the different products you could potentially have you yeah. should be doing the same thing from on a commercial perspective. Too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, let me ask you this, because one of the things we see so much in um, our, our particular area, which is, you know, mostly at Quidnick Island, is people buying uh, investment properties, which are multifamilies. Do the SBA loans work for that? They can't because um, of the the whole job creation um, intent of this loan. loan uh, oh, right. Loan it program. doesn't create jobs. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that would be more of like a real estate investment, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, opportunity there. And that's not what the SBA, at least on, on this side is really looking to do. Um, but there are other stuff like the seven a loan, which is kind of a, I guess a sister loan product or something you call it. But like, um, like, let's say if you, let's say you're going to buy a restaurant and Newport, the liquor licenses go for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they do. It just for the real estate. Let's just say you're going to buy the real estate for, um, a million dollars you would get half a million from the bank four hundred thousand from the sba with that interim loan in there and then you'd bring a hundred thousand but then you also got to pay for um the liquor license the liquor inventory maybe yeah. you're paying for good furniture oil, stuff like that yep cancel systems um yeah. and so lots of times you can get what's called a 7a loan which these are um a different kind of sba product but they help with um usually with non-real estate purchases that are probably that are usually like tucked into one of these real estate transactions so that's kind of a whole nother ball of wax and, and, and a different situation that if you're getting into that you're probably already knee deep with your um your loan officer and the sba in terms of how, you know making these so that's kind of like a real uh, deep dive stuff but um if from a from a anybody who's in, in doing commercial real estate or small business owner who's sick of renting and wants to buy um, and capitalize on the low interest rates or, or a broker or a realtor who wants to be able to speak intelligently to this. Um, the, the very broad brush, what we just described of the 504 loan system and how it interacts with the local banks is something that you, you just have to be at least conversant in. You have to have at least a, yeah. a, a nutshell yeah. understanding of, of how these things go. Absolutely. Adam, that was, uh, I loved that. I, I just had no idea that, that that was out there. I think we just brought something really um, valuable to the realtors in this area. This is something that you can help because we, we do have so many people that, you know, maybe they have a little condo down at, um, where am I thinking, a brick marketplace, uh, yeah. you know, and those are 200000 and maybe somebody only has part of the money and they can't, do the rest of it or these are ways that you can help your clients and and sort of spread uh you know small businesses and small businesses of course are the absolute backbone of rhode island in particular i think more than anywhere i've ever seen um so this is a great way for you to help uh your clients adam thank you so much for taking the time out of your day i know you ran into your office from a uh, closing because you're so busy That's um, <laughs> If you liked this video, please hit that like, that thumbs up, 
hit the subscribe button so that you will know when something else comes out and hit the bell so you'll get notified when we put out another video. I'm Sandy Warner with Warner Realty Group, making the complex simple. Thank you.